The North Korean Korean People's Army had taken advantage of the element of surprise and had conducted a blitzkrieg invasion of South Korea. The UN had managed to hold up the invading forces along the Busan perimeter. The front had become a bleak slaughterhouse and US command had two options, push through the Busan perimeter, paying dearly for every yard, or launch a daring surprise landing behind enemy lines to threaten their supply lines and push the enemy off balance. The US command had two options for the amphibious landing, Incheon and Kunsan. Incheon was 100 miles north of Kunsan and next to the capital of Seoul. Kunsan was favoured by the US Navy as it was closer to the Busan perimeter which would make a link up easier and could threaten the main KPA supply lines at Daejeon. Incheon was not ideal for an amphibious landing as it had two passages that could easily be blocked by mines and was heavily fortified. The currents were quick and the tides were the largest in Asia, meaning that any reinforcements would have to wait for hours. MacArthur's Incheon strategy relied on the KPA thinking that an attack there would be suicidal and so be caught utterly by surprise. His strategy was high risk and high reward. A successful landing would be a decisive blow and would avoid a costly winter campaign to take back the South. Which would you choose? Would you be cautious and go with the US Navy and land at Kunsan, or go all out with MacArthur and land at Incheon? Of course, you could tell by the title of this video that the risky idea to attack Incheon won out. The plan was to emulate the success of the D-Day landings. The preparation would be done in secret to maintain the element of surprise. Infrastructure and military targets at Kunshan were bombed to make it seem as though UN forces would attack the obvious target. Kunshan was their Calais and Incheon was their Normandy. Two weeks before the landing, a reconnaissance team surveyed the beaches. This was crucial in figuring out whether the KPA suspected an attack. The team found that the KPA had not extensively mined the channel. Good news. However, they were discovered and a small skirmish ensued. Surely now, the KPA knew an attack would take place there. From the 10th to the 15th of September, UN ships and aircraft bombarded the landing sites and fortifications. The KPA coastal artillery fired back, scoring 12 hits. At 06.30, on the 15th of September, the leading troops landed at Green Beach to little KPA resistance. The KPA had been outnumbered 6 to 1. Complete surprise had been achieved. Due to the tide, the troops had to wait until the late afternoon for reinforcements to arrive and for marines to storm red and blue beaches. During the next few days, KPA T-34s counterattacked the invasion force but were defeated by UN aircraft and tanks. On the 17th, the troops hurried to capture Kimpo airfield. Once it had been taken, transport planes brought in tons of vehicles, troops and supplies. After the successful landings at Incheon, the UN forces would have to undergo a slow and brutal attack on Seoul. Operation Chromite had been a gamble, but the payoff changed the course of the Korean War. The beachhead was used as a new front to capture the capital, and a breakout attack around the Busan perimeter had prompted the KPA to hurriedly retreat northwards. This retreat north would go another 200 miles before the People's Liberation Army changed the tide again.